So now let us see the remaining pattern of questions. So before moving to the next pattern of questions, let us understand the a very you know powerful concept that is taking the fractional approach in questions of compound interest. So we will understand what is fractional approach with the help of an example. But before that, let me tell you a few things. To use this approach, you must have an idea how to convert percentages into fractions. For example, you must be familiar with, you know, standard percentages. For example, if somebody says 25%, you must have an idea that 25% is one fourth of something. Similarly, let's say 33.33%. So this is one third of something. So these are pretty simple percentage to fractional conversions. But during exam times, you can expect these kind of uh, fractions as well. So these are all standard fractions. If, if you practice a while, you will understand that what is its equivalent fraction. So 11.11% that is equivalent to 1 by 9th of something. Similarly, 9.09. So this is equal to 1 by 11th of something. So if you take this approach, calculations becomes way too easier. So we'll take a few examples. A question is rate of compound interest being 8.33%. The total interest for second year is this much. So rate of compound interest being 8.33. The total interest for the second year is rupees 273 find the interest earned for first year so 8.33 so 8.33 is equal to 1 by 12th of anything 1 by 12th of anything so you know that you have deposited something for two years this question the data in this question extends up till two years the framework of this question is based on money being deposited for two years, second year, 8.33 rate, rate is equal to 1 by 12. So 8.33 is equal to 1 by 12th of something. You have deposited the money for two years. Now strategy is assume, assume principal, principal. To, you choose this fraction, this denominator, denominator is 12, 12 square units, 12 square units. Why square? Why not cube? Because number of years is 2. That's why square. Had the number of years been 3, I would have taken 12 cube. So assume the principal to be 12 square units. So I assume that 12 square is how much? 144. So see, take this approach. So I assume that I have deposited 144 rupees, 144 X. So what is bank doing? Bank is giving one twelfth of my deposit as interest. Bank. So whatever is there in my bank, bank is going to give one twelfth of it as interest. So if you have taken something as 12 square unit, 12 into 12. So if you try to find it's one twelfth. You can do it two times, two times it will be. So for two times it will be cancelled for sure. So that's why. You... So now let's see if we assume the original deposit to be 144 X. So after one year, after one year, bank has given me one twelfth of it as interest. So after one year interest earned is 1 12th of this 1 12 of 144 that is equal to 12. So first year the interest that you are going to earn is 12 X next year. Next year the total interest total interest this 12 X you are definitely going to get. Why? Because 1 12th of this money plus plus interest on previous years interest. <clears throat> so previous year already 12 X you have earned. Now, one twelfth of this previous year's interest also you are going to earn. So, one twelfth of 12x, that means x. So, next year, this is the total interest that you are going to earn, 13x. 
so as per the question the total interest earned in second year is 273 x so you can say 13 x is equal to 273 so from here x is equal to uh, 273 by 13 so 21 now what we have to find we have to find the interest earned in first year so what is the interest earned in first year 12 x therefore first years interest so that is equal to 12 x is equal to 12 into 21 so 12 into 21 is how much 240 um, so 240 plus 12 252 this so whenever you are able to represent you know rate into fraction things will become very easy let's take another example a bank pays 11.11% and 12.50% interest for two consecutive years on an investment. If the bank offers simple interest instead of compound interest, then a customer receives rupees 11 less as interest. So see what is the meaning of the question? Before that, 11.11% is equal to 1 by 9th of something. Similarly, 12.50% is equal to 1 by 8th of something. If you have practiced questions based on percentages, you will understand that how to solve this. So these are certain standard percentages. Now, as per the question, there is an amount P. You can take two different approaches. Either you can deposit it in simple interest or you can deposit it in compound interest. So you have noticed that if you allow, if you allow this money to remain in the bank, so bank for the first year is paying this rate, for the second year bank is paying this rate. So you have noticed that in case of compound, in, in case of simple interest, you are earning rupees 11 less. So smart approach, instead of assuming this to be equal to P, assume it's something which will make calculation easier. Now understand, if you assume this to be P, so P has to be such a number which is divisible, whose 1 ninth can be found out and whose 1 eighth also can be found out. So P must be such a number whose 1 eighth and 1 ninth both can be found out. So make P such a number, so P must be such a number that if you try to find its 1 ninth, that means it must be a multiple of 9 or if you try to find its 1 8th, that means it must be a multiple of 8. So at the same time, P has to be a multiple of 8 and 9. So I assume P to be equal to 72x. So if you assume P to be equal to 72x, see how easy calculations would become. So let's assume P to be equal to 72x and let's try to solve this question. What is the question trying to say that you deposited 72x in simple interest and same 72x in compound interest. What was the bank doing? For the first year bank was giving 11.11% as interest. Next year bank was giving 12.50% interest in both the cases. So 11.11 is 1 by 9th. This is 1 by 8. So what happens? What? How much simple interest you have earned? Please understand. So you deposited 72x. First year, what is the interest? 1 by 9th of 72x. So 1 by 9th of 72x is equal to how much? 8x. Next year, what is the interest? 1 by 8. Since it is simple interest, so interest is always calculated on the original deposit. So next year, the interest that you are going to earn is 1 by 8th of the original deposit. Original deposit is 72x. So 1 by 8 of 72, that means 9x. So total simple interest earned, total SI that you would be earning is 8x plus 9x. 8x plus 9x. So that is equal to... 17x. So this is the total simple interest you would earn. If you place this money 
at same rate that means first year 1 by 9th the next year 1 by 8th then what will happen so now i am trying to solve in case of compound interest so i deposited 72x for the first year bank is going to pay me 1 by 9th so 1 by 9th of 72 so 1 by 9th of 72 is equal to how much 8 so bank is going to pay me 8 8x as interest 8x as interest 1 by 9th the next year bank is going to give me 8x for 1 by 8 so 1 by 8 of original amount plus 1 by 8 of interest that I have earned in last year so 1 by 8 of 72 that is 9x and 1 by 8 of interest that you have earned in last year so 8x 1 by 8 that means x so first year you got 8x second year you got 10x as interest so total compound interest that you have earned is equal to 8x plus 10x so that is equal to 18x so as per the question this money is less than this money by how much is rupees 11 less so as per the given information 18x minus 17x is equal to 11 x is equal to 11 so what is the question find principal amount principal we have assumed to be equal to 72x so that is 72 into 11 7 92 so let's take the next question the compound interest on a certain sum for two years at 10 percent per annum so 10 percent is equal to 1 by 10 time is equal to two years so assume assume principal to be equal to 10 square unit 10 square units or 100 units so start with this assumption that you have deposited 100x in the bank the compound interest on certain sum for two years so let's see so first year interest so 10 percent so 10 percent of 10x so 10x next year interest 10 percent of the original amount plus 10 percent of the interest you have earned so far so 100x 10 percent that means 10x plus 10 percent of 10x that means x so that is equal to 11x so as per the question the compound interest for two years at 10 percent so 10x plus 11x is equal to 525 so from here let's find out the value of x so 21x is equal to 525 it means x is equal to 525 by 21 so 42 so 225 times so now what so x comes out to be equal to 25 it means the money that we have deposited is 100x therefore principal principal is equal to 100x is equal to 2500 what is the question the simple interest on the same sum for double the time at half the rate percent per annum now in the second scheme you have to deposit the same amount same amount because same sum we have to double the time that means time is four years rate is half rate is five percent so we have now to deposit the same amount same amount means principal is equal to 2500 same amount time doubled rate halved that means 10 by 2 5 percent and this is a case of simple interest so in five years so in five years total interest generated is 20 percent 
सो टोटल इंटरेस्ट जेनरेटेड इन फोर इयर्स इन फोर इयर्स एट द रेट ऑफ फाइव परसेंट सिंपल इंटरेस्ट पर एन एम इज इक्वल टू फोर इंटू फाइव परसेंट दैट इज ट्वेंटी परसेंट ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ द इनिशियल डिपॉजिट सो द सिंपल इंटरेस्ट सो ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ देयर फॉर एस आई अर्न इज इक्वल टू ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ डिपॉजिट ऑफ डिपॉजिट सो दिस इज इक्वल टू ट्वेंटी बाय हंड्रेड इन टू डिपॉजिट डिपॉजिट इज टू फाइव जीरो जीरो सो दिस कम्स आउट टू बी इक्वल टू फाइव हंड्रेड सो लेट्स टेक नेक्स्ट एग्जाम्पल एट इलेवन पॉइंट वन वन परसेंट कंपाउंड इंटरेस्ट पर एन एम फाइंड द रेशियो ऑफ इंटरेस्ट अर्न फॉर द सेकेंड एंड थर्ड ईयर फॉर द सेकेंड एंड थर्ड ईयर वॉट इज द रेट रेट इज इक्वल टू इलेवन पॉइंट वन वन परसेंट सो विच इज इक्वल टू वॉट सो दिस इज इक्वल टू वन बाय नाइन्थ ऑफ समथिंग सो द टोटल फ्रेमवर्क ऑफ द क्वेश्चन इज अप टिल थर्ड ईयर सो टोटल टाइम इन्वॉल्व ईयर इज इक्वल टू थ्री ईयर्स so i assume assume principal to be equal to 9 cube units this denominator raised to this time period so 9 cube that is 729 x and then you start your journey so let's see so what is the rate of interest earned for second and third year so let's move to the next slide so now let's solve using this we have already assumed that we are going to deposit 729x and the rate is 11.11 so the money that we have deposited in the bank is 729x what is bank doing bank is paying me 11.11% interest which is actually equal to 1 by 9th of anything so let's see what will happen year after year so at the end of year 1 end of year 1 what is the interest that i am going to earn so bank will see that what was the amount till now so i have to pay 1/9 of that amount so till now there were <clears throat> 729x in my account so bank will pay me 1/9 of this so 1/9 of 729 that is equal to 81x because of which new amount in my account will become old amount Plus the interest that I have just earned, so 729x plus 81x. So the new updated amount, the updated amount in my account would be sum of these two 729x plus 81x that is equal to 810x. So what will happen after the end of second year? End of second year. So again, bank will say that this is the time to pay interest. So bank will see that what is the amount in the account so amount current amount is 810 now interest will be given on this 810x so 1/9th of 810x so 1/9th of 810 so that is 90x because of which the updated amount updated amount in my account will become 810x plus 90x so that is equal to 900x no no 810 plus 90 yeah exactly equal to 900x <clears throat> so this is the updated amount what will happen at the end of third year end of third year again it's time to pay interest so bank will say that currently there are this much money in your account i will pay 1/9th of it so 1/9th of 900x that is equal to 100x because of which my updated account will be 900x plus 100x so that is equal to 1000x so what is the question question is the ratio of interest earned in second year to interest earned in third year so interest earned in second year is 90x interest earned in third year is 100x so the ratio is 90x is to 100x so this can be simplified to 9 is to 
so that's why you have to take this fractional approach you can avoid lengthy calculations so fractional approach depends on the fact whether or not you are able to convert this you know percentages into fractions okay let's see this one a sum of money is invested at 28.56 so 28.56 now understand if in real exam you get such kind of percentages and that too with questions associated with compound interest and that too when the question goes up till three years the general tendency is the student are going to skip this question if you go for traditional approach trust you me it will take you at least five to six minutes and that too chances are very dim that you are going to you know you would be able to do the correct calculation that's why that's why i all i would always suggest that if if possible you know take the fractional approach because all these percentages they are given to eliminate the students who are knowledgeable and students who are not aware of these ticks and trips this, this is an original question from mains fine so that's why there are no options this this is given as mains that means you have to definitely solve this question this is a question from mains that means even the question setter expects that you have like three to four minutes to solve this but uh, this question if you take the fractional approach it won't take more than two minutes so let's do that 28.56 so 28.56 if only you understand that 28.56 is two seventh of anything two seventh of anything that means if you will choose a number you will be asked to find two seventh of that very number so this time you have to choose number carefully such that you know keeping in mind that 28.56 is actually two seventh of anything now what the total premise of the question extends up till three years so therefore assume assume principal to be equal to seven choose this denominator cube the maximum number of years mentioned in the question so seven cube so seven cubes so seven into seven 49 49 into seven 343 units so 343 x and then continue with the calculation so let us see so i deposited 343 x what happened to that after one year what happened so bank is paying me two seventh as the interest so after one year what will be the interest that i will earn so two seventh of 343 so that is 49 into 2 98 x as interest so now total updated uh, so 98 so total updated amount in the account will be equal to what 343 x plus 98 x so total updated amount 8 3 11 14 so 340 sorry 441 x 441 x so after two years after two years again it is the time to give interest so this time interest will be equal to 2 7th of 441 x so that is equal to um so 63 so 63 into 2 126 so 126 x so therefore updated amount will be 441 plus 126 so 76567 x now at the end of 3 years what is the interest so interest will be 2 7 of 567 so 2 by 7 into 567 so 81 81 into 2 162 x so 162 x what will be the updated amount so plus 162 so 9 6 6 are 12 so 729 x so what is the question if the interest earned in third year that means this is 216 more than the interest earned in second year 
this it means 162x minus 126x is equal to 216 so we have to find the principal so basically we have to find x principal is 343x so x so 162x minus 126x so it indicates 36x is equal to 216 so from here x is equal to 6 so x comes out to be equal to 6 so principal amount therefore principal is equal to 343 into x so 343 into 6 so 6 3s are 18 so carry over 1 so 25 5 carry over 2 so 2058 is the principal so this is how you take the fractional approach so let's see the last question based on this approach now let's see this question so john invested money in two schemes a and b <clears throat> offering compound interests at five percent and ten percent respectively if the total interest accrued through these two schemes together in two years is equal to this much so two different rates so five percent which is equal to one by twentieth of anything and ten percent which is equal to one by tenth of anything and time is equal to two years time is equal to two years so 20 square so assume <clears throat> the total amount total amount has been deposited in two different scheme so one scheme was offering five percent the other scheme was offering ten percent and this you have done for two years so assume this to be equal to 400 x so 20 square units so 20 square units so 400 x and this to be 100 y 10 square 100 y to make things convenient fine so what is the question the total amount of interest accrued through these two schemes together so now let us see what happened to 400 and what happened to 100 so start with 400 so you deposited 400 x bank is promising you 5 percent that means 1 by 20th of whatever you already have in your account so interest 1 by 20th that means 20x updated amount for 20x this is one year at the end of two year interest current amount is 420 so 1 by 20th of 420 so 21x updated amount 420 plus 21 so 441x consider this journey of this investment so you invested 100y bank is giving you 1 by 10th as interest so after one year interest 10y updated amount 110y one more year passes interest 11x sorry 11y updated amount 110y plus 11y that is equal to 121y now the total amount total amount was 15000 so you can say 400x plus 100y is equal to 15000 so i can say 400x because i have assumed the total money was deposited in these two ways so i can say that 400x plus 100y is equal to 15000 as per the data also the total interest earned so what is the total interest earned you have deposited 400 this 400 finally becomes 41x so total interest from this scheme is 41x 400 becomes 441 so addition of 41 so 41x similarly total interest earned from here you deposited 100 y you are getting back 121 y so total interest that you are earning from here is 
21Y. It is said that total interest earned together is 2075. So 41X plus 21Y is equal to 2075. So 41X plus 21Y is equal to 2075. So now basically we have to solve these two equations. So two equations, two variables. So let's see. If you simplify the first one, taking 100 as common, you can say 4x plus y is equal to 150 and 41x plus 21y is equal to 2075. So now let's solve this. So if you solve these two simultaneous equation, so you'll see that x comes out to be 25 and y comes out to be equal to 50. So what is the question? Find out the amount invested in scheme A. Scheme A 400x. So x is equal to 25. So therefore scheme A 400x that is equal to 400 into 25. So 10,000 is the amount invested in scheme A. So if you use the traditional method, suppose you try to solve this using traditional method, then, then you can use. But the problem is because you have to find interest, total interest and not the total amount. So that's why the, you know, calculation becomes easier by taking the second approach. Traditional approach, had you chosen to use the traditional approach, so you could have said that the amount is divided in these two x in scheme one, the remaining in scheme two. So you can see it will become very lengthy calculation. So this at the rate of 5% and this at the rate of 10%. So in two years, so first you find the amount, then you subtract the original value. So you can see it is getting murkier. So it's not a very favorable approach. So that's why I always try to take the fractional approach whenever possible.